Okay, I've got my six rectangles finished and I've got them laid out on my kitchen table here so I can show you how to lay yours out. So when you put your rectangles down, we can make sure that we've got X's forming in the center of the blanket there. And then these little side triangles on the side in our kind of brighter contrast colors. And you'll notice if you look closely at one of the rectangles, the, the two edges are a little bit asymmetrical in that the bottom edge here has like a little bit bigger of a white area with five white blocks along this edge. And that upper edge up there only has three white blocks. So how we're gonna sew these together is we're gonna match up the uh, first two blocks here. So matching up the end that has these three blocks along this end and matching up this end with the two blocks along that end. We're gonna sew these two together. Then we'll sew the next two together in the same way, this set of two here, matching up where we've got three blocks there and two white blocks at that end. And then we'll join the next set in the same way. And then after we have kind of three sets made here, then we'll sew this seam to join those two together and then finally that seam there. And we are going to use the yarn tails to join. And if you didn't leave long yarn tails, that's okay. You can join a new piece of yarn. And I'll show you how to sew the seam here. And also I'll show you how I like to weave in my ends. I left the ends out on this rectangle so I can show you how I like to do it, kind of what works for me. And then once all of our squares are joined, we will work on the border and make some tassels. Okay, first I'll show you how I like to weave in my ends. And my favorite um, needles to use for this are Knitter's Pride uh, wool needles. And the reason I like these is because they have a little nylon loop. It's like a big eye. And I don't know, I'm like 46. <laughs> it's getting hard for me to thread a needle. So uh, I love to use these Knitter's Pride ones, and I'll try to put a link. These are relatively inexpensive. I got mine at my local yarn shop in Cortez, Colorado, which is still an hour and a half away. <laughs> but that's the closest yarn shop to me. But I really love these big eye needles, or you can just use a regular um, yarn needle like this one I got from Walmart. And um, so I like to thread the needle with the tail here, and I kind of will weave in and out of one of the C2C blocks or a couple of the C2C blocks. I like to go at least six times. So, um, and I like to run it under this little bit here where all of the um, double crochets are around, you know, 3DC together there. So I'll weave it kind of in that direction to get hidden under there. Just like that. And pull that through. And I like to do that kind of thing like six times. So now I see a little area here that looks good to slide it under those 3DC. So I'll go that way. That was kind of like our second pass. And then sometimes I'll, I'll run it down one of the double crochet stitches here to get down to that little bar. And I just kind of weave around in a square. I find that if it's woven in a couple different directions, then it's gonna stay put. And we've been using this rune of Lincoln on my couch forever, and my kids are really hard on blankets <laughs> and pillows. They're always pillow fighting. Um, and it's lasted, nothing's come apart. And I have had blankets come apart on me. And if I wanna change directions, what I do is I'll, I'll just grab like one loop, um, just anywhere, and then go back down the same one and kind of reverse my path. So kind of go through the, maybe I'll go down this double crochet. I just put a little yarn there and then go back through this one. So I just kind of weave around. I don't um, have a really strict pattern to weaving in ends here, but I go in a couple directions and, and go, you know, under about six stitches. And I like to try to end it on one that feels kind of tight. You know, sometimes the yarn will go through easily and sometimes when you push it back through, it just it's giving like a little bit of resistance. And that helps me to know that it's gonna stay put. And this, this uh, tail's not gonna come out. And even if it does pop out of one of these little blocks, we still have it under five more. So 
that's how I like to do it. And then if you have um, some, some yarn ends may end just like one block or two blocks from the edge and you can just weave those right out to the edge. Okay, so I'll finish weaving those in later. And now let's weave two of the blocks, uh, seam two of the blocks together. And I am not very good at sewing. I, I don't do a lot of um, hand sewing and I feel like I'm not that good at it, but really this seam um, just disappears. It just disappears. You really can't notice it in the finished blanket, even if you're not good at sewing. So don't worry, just give it a try. And if you forgot to um, leave long ends here, uh, don't worry, just, um, let's start at this end maybe, just join a new thread and you'll just have to weave in a couple extra ends. All right, so let's start at this end and we're gonna start joining the main color triangles here right at the end. And I don't have a, a thread right exactly at the edge. So I am going to grab my yarn needle, which I lost already, <laughs> and move this main color yarn tail over to this edge here. I'm just gonna kind of weave it in and out along this edge. It's gonna get covered up with the border anyway. And move it to the middle so I have a piece to sew with. And we're matching up, the, the blocks are gonna match along this seam. So make sure that you don't have it like this, where you have two blocks along this edge and three blocks along here. Don't do that, flip it over. And on the center seam, these are always gonna match. The, the blocks, block for block, we're gonna match. So um, I start at one side with the tail here and I insert my needle from the bottom of the work up to the top on that side. Then go over here, just grab the loop, insert from the bottom of the work up to the top. Maybe I'll zoom in just a bit more here. And you just go back and forth, grab the loop over here Insert your needle from the bottom of the work up to the top, and then on to the other side. And it doesn't matter, you know, which loops you grab. After every couple blocks, you can give it a little tug. It's really easy when you come to a block like this, where we can just match up double crochet for double crochet here. And I just grab one loop of that double crochet. So grab a loop from the bottom to the top, other side, the bottom to the top, and you just keep going. It does start to go pretty quickly. You'll still have some ends to weave in, but things really start to come together quickly here once you get going. Okay, now I'm done with this color after this little stitch here. <clears throat> And I like to lay my finger flat on the seam. Just give it a little tug. And, you know, maybe you can see it now, but once you're holding this blanket up and it's done, you are not gonna be able to notice this seam. So now I'm done with this color and I can weave it in. So I'm just gonna kinda work it down this double crochet here and weave it in these couple of blocks. And when you're weaving it in, it's okay to cross the seam that you just made if you want to. Maybe I'll finish weaving it in over here. And I forgot to mention, I did not block these um, rectangles. I find that just sewing the seam really helps straighten them out. And mine are kind of all slightly different <laughs> sizes and stuff, but it does, it, it evens out after you join them. So I sewed that in a little. I think I will take some time later and sew in the rest of this. But now that we've joined the, the white, now we can move on to our next color here. And so that's attached at this side. We're just going to go back and forth, grab one loop, insert your hook, uh, your needle from the bottom to the top. Wait, <laughs> that's actually a yarn tail I grabbed. All right, let's try that again. Move this yarn tail out of the way and we can sew it in later. But you just grab one loop on that side inserting your work from the bottom of the work up to the top and just go back and forth. And this is called mattress stitch. And it's my favorite way to join crochet whenever I'm sewing because it really is such an invisible seam. 
Uh, I actually did a mattress stitch tutorial. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell where to put your, your needle, but um, as long as your blocks are still matched up, you can really stick the needle anywhere. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I did a mattress stitch uh, tutorial for I Like Crochet Magazine. So you can go online and find that. It's how to seam a sweater. And that was from my Two Sisters Lake sweater, which is kind of a southwestern cropped kind of boxy sweater. Um, and there's a bunch of sizes for that. And that's a, a free pattern on I Like Crochet. But um, there's a good tutorial, a photo tutorial on that one. So we're just gonna keep making sure we're lining up the seam, lining up the blocks here, going back and forth, picking up a loop from the bottom to the top, and sewing all along in one color before you move on to the next color. So we got one more little yellow stitch here. And now once we're done with the color here, we pull it tight and then we can weave in the two ends of that color. And we'll move on to the next color. <laughs> so I'm gonna choose which end of this color is like the longest. Um, I have two, two ends here and this one is a lot longer, so I'm gonna choose this one. Just sew together and we'll start on this color, picking up one loop on that side. And one loop on this side. And just keeping it lined up, we'll just keep sewing all the way along. So you've done your last stitch, you can pull that color tight and move on to the next color. Check to see which tail is the longer one. They're both pretty long. <laughs> And just kind of move all the other tails out of the way. Can sew those in later. This is a lot of tails, but you know, what an impressive blanket. If you've come this far with me, wow. I mean, you should submit your blanket to the county fair because this thing's a lot of work, right? <laughs> I was thinking about maybe putting this one at the county fair, but I was also thinking about gifting it to my brother-in-law um, in Indiana who just bought his uh, first house. I haven't seen it yet, but... Um, He's a big fan of like uh, Yellowstone TV show and you know, he's he's got kind of a rugged cowboy vibe. So I thought he might like this blanket as his housewarming gift, but I kind of also want to submit it to the county fair <laughs> here in La Plata County, Colorado. I've always wanted to win a blue ribbon at a county fair, but I've never submitted anything. And our county is kind of notoriously competitive. There's a lot of very talented knitters and crocheters here. Um, and uh, I used to knit on Monday nights down in Durango with um, some of our knitting community before our yarn shop closed. Um, and wow, they are really great. So it'd be hard to beat. I don't wanna go and not get the blue ribbon. <laughs> I'm done with that color. I'm just gonna pull that one tight and move on to the next color. And you can see our seam here. Yeah, sure, you can notice it right now, but just because we've been looking at it. Once you, you know, take a step away, it's just going to totally disappear after we get these little ends woven in. So I'm going to keep on working my way up here. And choose the longer tail, and I'm going to put that one on my needle. And join this next little section. It's 
It's kind of hard to decide what loop to pick up, but just don't stress about it. I'm picking up pretty much whatever loop is easiest to grab here. It doesn't have to be like a black back loop only situation, or you don't even really have to be consistent. Just do the best you can. It's going to look great. Okay, I'm done with that little section. Now we're coming to the dreaded black yarn. <laughs> it's really hard to see. But I'm gonna choose my longer tail. They're both pretty long. I remember when I was little, my grandmother, my dad's mom, knit my twin sister and I hats with this beautiful fuzzy angora yarn. And she knit them to match the coats, uh, our coat colors. And my sister had like a pink and white snowflake coat. And so my, my grandmother knitted her a white hat and she was done really quickly. And my coat was orange and like navy blue. So my grandmother knit me a navy blue hat. And it took her like three extra weeks because she couldn't see the stitches. It's like fluffy Angora yarn. Um, and you know, she was like in her late eighties, I think. Um, <clears throat> and boy, it's hard to see that dark colored yarn. Um, but when it was finally done, oh, I love that hat. I wish I still had it because it was beautiful and fluffy and just what a luxury to have a hand knit hat from your grandmother. I do find that this task is a lot easier doing it on a table um, than it is in your lap. I think the, the flat surface of a table really helps to keep everything straight. All right, I'm finished with the black and we're over halfway with this little section. So we got our seam, still got some ends to weave in. And now that I'm past the halfway point, I'm gonna spin it around and pick up the next color. And I see that my my um, tails are not exactly in the, in the, you know, right up here where I need them to be. So I'm gonna pick the longer tail and I'm gonna scoot it up there just move the yarn tail up to where I need it just by going in these next couple stitches. Okay, now I have it right there where I need it and I'm just gonna do the same thing as before. Pick up one loop on this side from the bottom to the top. Now I'm just working, kind of sewing the seam down instead of up. And of course you don't have to spin your work if you don't want to, you can just keep going up the seam, but Kind of crouched over my coffee table here. I can't reach too far. <laughs> so we'll keep going. And then, you know, sometimes your tail might run out. And if you have another one that you can pick up, you know, from, move over to the other edge and then pick up, that might save you from having to add a new piece of yarn and weaving in even more tails. <laughs> I do notice that when you sew the seam, the whole blanket seems to get bigger. When I first laid out my rectangles, I was like, man, should I make two more? Because it looked kind of short. But when you sew the seam, it kind of flattens everything out, and it just makes it look a little bigger. And if I feel like it needs it, I might, you know, kind of steam block this or spray it and let it dry um, after I've sewn it all together. But I don't usually block it beforehand. Okay, we're done with that color. Now we'll pick up the next color. And it looks like I'm gonna have to move my tail a little bit here too, because the tail's kind of in the center of those two blocks. 
So let's thread the needle. And we'll just work our our tail along these top of these double crochets to get it up to where we need it. And now we can start sewing our seam in this color. Having the little sections of color really helps to keep the seam straight. <laughs> I think if this was all one color, it'd be a lot harder to line up. But I like I like sewing the seam in just little sections like this. Of course, you could always crochet these together if you prefer. This is definitely the more fiddly option. So put your finger down and tighten it up if need be. And we'll move on to the next color. You know, if you prefer to just crochet, single crochet um, these together, or slip stitch them together, or do any other sort of crochet join, totally go for it. This um, mattress stitch, I've chosen this because it's like the most invisible. But some of those other joining methods, um, they, you know, they're, they're a lot faster. So if this is just something that's not, you're not able to do, just crochet them together and you'll have a seam on the back, but that's okay. I have a, a blanket on Ravelry called the Rainbow Joy Blanket that I made for my twin sister when she was expecting a baby. And she went into labor on St. Patrick's Day. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, I, I forgot to make a baby blanket. <laughs> so I started a blanket on St. Patrick's Day and I just had this like idea of her sweet baby being like a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And of course he is, he turned out just perfect. And I made him a rainbow blanket with a bunch of little granny squares. And those ones I crocheted together. And that pattern has a good um, tutorial for how to join all the squares into rows and then join the, the rows, you know, the strips of squares all together in one blanket. That was a fun one. And I used the same yarn for that, this Lily Sugar and Cream Cotton. So if you're like me and you have a lot of sugar and cream cotton, go check out that Rainbow Joy blanket because I just love it. Yeah, I'd love to see um, sweet little Troy. All right, so I'm gonna move this tail up to the kind of the top of the seam here. And we're gonna sew back and forth, same as before. Our second to last color here. Okay, tighten it up if needed. And now let's do the last little bit. And again, I'm gonna have to move the tail up. And this time the tail on this side's a little longer, so I'm gonna start on this side and move the tail up to where we need it. And then I'll sew this last little bit here.
Okay, and we'll just press flat and kind of tug to pull that seam tight. So now we are done with our first little set of two blocks here. And the uh, all the tails that are in the middle, you can go ahead and weave in. But I like to leave this white one here right in the center because we're going to sew um, the two, any, any that are on the edges, basically. Leave those because you're going to use those to sew the other seam here the, to join our sets of two blocks together. So grab two more of your squares and sew them together in the same way that we just sewed this one. And then I'll show you how to sew the seam the long way and how to match up the squares here so that we get this beautiful southwestern diamond in the center. Okay, now I've got two pieces like this joined together. So two, two rectangles joined and then another set of two rectangles joined. And now when we sew this next seam, we do have to line up these two rectangles um, that we've joined in a certain way. So there are two things to look for. So on this first piece here, we've got this end of the rectangle, or maybe I have to zoom out a bit here. Okay, this end of the rectangle here has one, two, three, four, five, six blocks across here. And at this end of the rectangle, it's wider. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks wide on that main color yarn. So what we want to do is we'll put that the wider um, end, that's the end of the blanket. So when you have ten blocks of main color yarn right in the center seam there, that's one end of the blanket. And now we're going to work on more the center of the blanket. So when you Arrange your next square here, the next joined rectangle. You want to face it in the same way. So just like this one is with that um, block, wider diamond of 10 blocks of main color in the center there, do the same thing, but put your, your 10 blocks of main color here and then this smaller diamond down on this side of it. So when we put these two together here, we get this cool southwestern shape right in the center. So we've got two blocks here and then this central shape and those two sticking out there. So it makes that diamond shape. And another thing you can check, another way you can check that you have it lined up right is at the edge of the blanket here, the, the white lines will kind of make sense here. So you've got your main color, a little block right at the, the end of one of those, but not the other one. Now, if we had it turned around the wrong way, and we have this little tiny diamond in the middle, you'll see at the end, we don't have that white going all the way to the end. We've got this contrast color one area in the corner there. So turn your rectangles around so that when you're lining up the seam here, you're getting the perfect little white zigzag here, and you're getting this cool southwestern diamond right in the middle. So that's how to line them up. Once you've got these squares kind of lined up the right way, we can start sewing the seam this way. I'll zoom back in. So grab your yarn needle. I keep losing mine. <laughs> I don't know where I set it. Well, I'll just grab this other one. So we're gonna just do the same thing we did to join the other um, the, the squares that we already joined. Find kind of a long tail right where you need it or move one over to where you need it. And this time the, the colors may not match up. For example, we've got a main color, two blocks here, and then contrast color one here. But it's okay if the colors don't match up. Just do this kind of the same thing. We're gonna insert our hook from the bottom of the work up to the top, and then over to the other side, grab one loop. If you grab two loops, that's okay. And we'll just keep going back and forth, stitch for stitch, making sure our blocks line up. And even though they're not the same color, you can still tell, you know, where the change is. It's every two blocks, it's gonna kind of um, be a different color to pick up here. 
Sometimes we can carry the, carry them uh, colored down four blocks. Like here we've got this black section where we've got four blocks that we could sew in black yarn. But just try to keep the blocks, uh, crochet C2C blocks kind of lined up here. All right, that's pretty much the end of my first little section here. And don't pull too hard on these because then you'll see I just pulled a little too hard. And now we've got this little like divot. If that happens, you can just pull it back out. And the border, we're going to work a border around this, so it, it won't really matter. So now I'm going to see if I can pick up a black tail from the back here somewhere. Are there any black tails? Well, there's a black tail there, so I'm actually going to sew with, you know, I might just keep sewing with the tail that I had here. Keep going for one more block. As long as the tail that you're sewing with matches one of the colors. So, you know, to sew this section, use either the black or the white. I'm just going to keep going with the white that I had. To sew together the first section. And I'm just going to keep going with that since I still have enough. And sew these next two blocks here. So just keep going back and forth, stitch for stitch, lining up the blocks as best you can, making your seam as neat as you can. Mine's not perfect, but it, you know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be. All right, tighten that section and then we can grab our next tail and keep sewing on up the line. And once we have these two blocks sewn together down that seam, We'll add the next one the same way. So make sure that we have the, the wider block uh, area of 10 C2C blocks matched up with this one. And check your corner and make sure that you get a white block over here to continue that white zigzag when you line up the next set of blocks. All right, happy sewing. And I'll show you how to do the border next. Okay, the border is really simple. I'm showing you on my kind of raggedy old <laughs> blanket we've been using for a couple of years here. Um, it's just five rounds of single crochet in the round, round and around. You don't have to join after each round. And then one optional round at the end here of reverse single crochet or crab stitch. It's lost a little bit of its definition over the years because I've washed it a bunch of times, but that's what we're going to do. So choose your favorite color or the color that you have enough left of <laughs> to um, do for your border. You can choose any color you want. And um, I will show you how to get started here. I am going to choose contrast color one, this kind of like dark teal color. And I haven't woven in my ends yet. And that is because I like to crochet over them on the border just to save me the first little pass or two on weaving in the ends. So you can start anywhere around the blanket that you like. I'm going to put the yarn on my hook with a slip stitch. And to crochet evenly around, you know, everyone's tension might be different, but what works for me is to work three single crochets into one block and then only two into the next. Three single crochets into one block, two into the next. Three into one block, two into the next. And you can kind of see as you look at the edge of your blanket here that the blocks kind of alternate which way they're going. So I like to work the three um, single crochet into the one that has three double crochets kind of standing up here. So they're easy to crochet into. And then I like to work the two single crochets into the one where the, cro the double crochets are kind of lying flat. So I'll work one into kind of the, the 
top half of that double crochet and one single crochet into the bottom half of that double crochet. So I'm just going to attach near, near the corner here. Anywhere is fine. And I'm going to um, join the, the yarn to the blanket with a slip stitch. And I'll start with a chain one and I'm going to work three single crochets across this C2C block here. So there's my first block of border. And now I'm going to work two single crochets across this next block. One into the top of that stitch and the other one into the bottom of the stitch. Now moving on to the next one, I'm going to work three single crochets across this block. And then two single crochets across this next block. Kind of stick your hook under two loops or one loop, whatever you prefer is fine. Now three single crochet into this next block. And two single crochet into the next. Now I don't do anything different in the corner. I just keep going three single crochet into this one. And I don't add any extra stitches at the corner. You know, sometimes you might put an extra um, single crochet or two into the corner or work three single crochets into the corner. I, I don't feel the need to do that for this blanket um, to get a flat corner. So I'm just going to keep going. I worked three single crochet into that one, and now I'm going to work two into this side of it. And I am going to crochet over this tail just to help um, secure it down before I weave that tail in and just keep going with the pattern three single crochet across this block and now i'm going to drop that white tail and i'm going to work two single crochet into the next block and now i'm working over this next tail just to secure that one save yourself a little bit of time of course you still have to weave it in but it just saves you a bit now three single crochet across the next block. And two single crochet across the next. So work your way all the way around, just working three single crochet into one block and then two single crochet into the next. Or And do what you have to do to, to keep your border from getting wavy. For me, this gives a nice kind of flat border and you know you may see a divot I see just a slight little divot here wherever my colors change on my C2C but that will even out as we go um, around and around here but if you um, if your corners curling up like a cup by all means put an extra uh, single crochet or two into that corner um, but for me that this this works out nice and flat and I'm using the same five millimeter hook that I used for the rest of the border or the rest of the blanket uh, I know sometimes people will go down a hook size so I'm coming to the end of the black I'm going to drop that black tail and wherever you see the the double crochet stitch is kind of lying flat lying down just work two single crochets across that block and wherever you see um, three double crochet stitches standing upright Work three single crochets, one into each of those. So we'll work like this all the way around. I'm finishing up round one of the border here, and I'm getting ready to start round two. So for round two of the border, we are going to work one single crochet into each stitch. And you may notice I had to change my border color. <laughs> I really wanted to use this color, but I didn't have enough, so I had to go black. Um, so when we start round two, I'm just going to single crochet right into that first stitch of the border here. I'm not going to slip stitch to join. You can if you want to. And we're just going to work one single crochet in each stitch around. And this time when we get to the corners, we're going to work two single crochet stitches into each corner. And we'll do the same thing for round two, round three, round four, and round five. So just keep going with your border. 
uh, one stitch in each single crochet and then two stitches into the corner stitch which I'll show you in a minute when I get to the corner and I don't turn my work after each round I know some people like to do that and that is totally fine if you want to turn your work after each round but I'm gonna keep the same side facing up the whole time and just work around and around and to keep my corners from curling up we're gonna work two stitches into the corner stitch Okay, so this next stitch is my corner stitch, and I'm going to work two single crochets into that. The first one kind of along this way. I'm going to kind of turn it and work that second single crochet into the corner stitch. And now we'll keep just continuing around for round two here, working one single crochet into each stitch around. And when we get back to where we started here, where we start our round two. You can kind of see this little bump. We'll just keep crocheting around one stitch into each stitch and two stitches into each corner until we have five rounds of the border. And then for round six, we'll do um, an optional reverse single crochet or crab stitch. And I'll show you how to do that when I get to it. Okay, I'm just finishing round five of the border and I'm finishing the round right where we started the round lined up there so you can count one two three four five stitches down we've got five rounds of border and now for the sixth and final round of the border I like to do reverse single crochet which is also known as crab stitch and this is optional you can either end your border here or um, just do another round of regular single crochet but in reverse single crochet, we're doing single crochet stitches, but we're going to go backwards and work into this stitch and then this stitch and then this stitch instead of, you know, moving forwards like that. So I like to put my finger on the top of the loop here, insert the hook into the stitch you just finished, yarn over, pull it through. Now we have two loops on the hook. Now we'll yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. That's one reverse single crochet stitch. It doesn't look like much now. <laughs> Let's try it again. We're going to crochet into this stitch here. Insert the hook into that stitch. Grab the yarn and pull it through. Grab the yarn and pull it through. Let's do another one. And I do find it easy to, easier to put the, my finger on top of this loop for some reason. Insert the hook into that next stitch. Grab the yarn and pull it through. So we've got two loops. Grab the yarn and pull it through. And now you can kind of start to see this little braided effect that we have here. <clears throat> and it just gives the blanket a nice strong edge, a nice texture to the edge. And so it's easy to grab when you're using the blanket and cover yourself up with it. So keep your finger on the top of the loop there. Insert into that next stitch to the right. Grab the yarn and pull it through, and grab the yarn and pull through two loops. So that's reverse single crochet or crab stitch, and I think it just finishes off the blanket really nicely. You can see that bit of a border there. Um, it just gives a little thickness to the edge, and it kind of reminds me of the thickness that we see on Da Nen Navajo rugs here in the Southwest. The, the edges can be a little bit thicker than the center, at least on the rugs that I have. So I think it's nice and just keep going around. And in this round, we don't do anything special at the corners. We're just going to reverse single crochet into each stitch around. Okay, now that our border is done, um, and it looks great, <laughs> hopefully your reverse single crochet turned out great, 
and you're able to just go in each stitch around and then cut the yarn, pull it through and fasten off and weave in the ends. And now I like to finish this blanket with a triple layer tassel, one on each corner here like this. And I just think that adds a little, you know, it does, it really turns it into a magic carpet. <laughs> it adds a little kind of bohemian flair. So I'll show you how to make my triple layer tassel here. And I've learned a few more tips and tricks on tassels since the written uh, Runa C2C blanket was published. So these don't follow the, them exactly, but either way is fine. So we're gonna start by cutting some lengths of yarn. I like to make the shortest layer of the tassel matching the border color, and then any two other colors you want. So the shortest layer of the tassel, we are going to cut uh, 24 pieces of yarn that are 14 inches long, and that's about 35 and a half centimeters here. So these are our shortest pieces, and those are gonna go on the top. So cut 24 of those. Then for our middle layer on the tassel, we are going to cut 16 um, pieces of yarn that are 16 inches or 40 and a half centimeters long. So about 16 inches here. That'll create our middle layer. And you know we made 24 of the first layer and 16 of the middle layer. And we're also gonna make 16 of this third layer here. And we'll cut 16 of these that are 18 inches long. That is about 50 centimeters. So we have 16 of the longest layer, 16 of the middle layer, and we have 24 of the top layer here. And this is because you need enough to really cover all the way around. And if you just cut 16 of these, your, your tassel might look a little sparse on this top layer. Then we're also gonna need to cut two more pieces. One will be um, a tie to um, make the tassel ends here. So cut that about 14 inches or 35 and a half centimeters. And then the other piece is, is the piece you need to wrap around the tassel. So I like to use that uh, um, same color here and you make that about 24 inches or 61 centimeters to wrap that. You'll also need some scissors and a yarn needle. I'm gonna stick with my Knitter's Pride needle here. And I also like to have a, um, a yarn wrapper. That helps me really cut the ends straight and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So the way we get started here to make our tassel, we are going to move the blanket out of the way, <laughs> get our pieces ready here. We want to take the tie piece, the short little tie, um, uh, what was I calling this in the pattern? Is that the tie? Yes, this is the tie. We'll call this longer piece the wrap. <laughs> so we're going to take our tie piece and we're just going to fold it in half and set it like this. And eventually we're going to bring this around all of the pieces of yarn here. So the first layer is going to be our longest layer. And we're just gonna lay that across the tie like that. Try to get it in the center. I'm gonna zoom out a bit because this tassel's kind of long. And you want these nice and kind of tight together, thin, because we want the other layers to spread out over it. This is kind of the central core and you want this really nice and tight. So smooth it all together. And then this next layer, you can flatten out a little bit because you want it to completely cover the ones beneath. So take a, time, a little bit of time. If your yarn is really wrinkly, like kinked up, um, like the center of the skein or you know the last little bit of the cone here, you can get it wet and smooth it out <clears throat> or you can steam it however you like. So I'm gonna make this one a little bit wider and lay it on top of those, just right on top, but just so it's covering it at the top. So we can't really see any more of that um, bottom color because we're covering it up with that second layer. Now we take the top layer, our 24 14 inch pieces or 35 and a half centimeters and we're going to make this one even a little bit wider like flatten these out a bit more. Straighten them out a bit and we're going to cover that layer right on top like that. Okay, so now we've got on the end here, I don't know if you can 
see the ends of each of these. You see the three layers popping out. Our black is completely covering. So now it's time to tie the tassel. So with this tie, you've got the two ends over here and we've got the loop here. So we're just gonna tuck the ends through the loop and pull tight. Like that. And then we'll just fold it in half, fold the tassel in half. So now we've got the beginnings of a tassel here and pull this nice and tight. These are the ends that you're gonna use to sew it onto the blanket but we still need to do the wrap. So we'll take our 24 inch long or 50 inch, uh, 50 centimeter piece here and we're gonna wrap it around. But first I like to just kind of make sure everything's looking okay with this tassel that we've got a nice layer of black on the top. If there's anything you need to kind of move around, if there's an area where they're all bunched up, you can kind of move it around and give it, you know, couple little strokes to smooth everything out. <laughs> now we'll do the wrap. We're gonna do the same thing with the tie. We're gonna fold this piece in half and lay it down. And we're gonna lay our tassel on top of it. And just like before, we're gonna put the ends through the loop and pull it tight here. And now we've got the, the wrap tied around the top like that. And you can secure this however you want. You can tie a knot here if you like. Just to keep these really secure. And then just wrap this around and around. I like to start at the bottom and wrap toward the top because I'm gonna tuck the ends in through the top. So just wrap the ends around nice and tight. And when you get to where there's just a bit left, then we'll thread the ends of the wrap on a yarn needle. I'm gonna do them both at the same time, but if you wanna separate them, you can also separate them. Hard to thread a needle or two at once. <laughs> uh, but I probably should have gotten a bigger, bigger eye needle out for this. Uh, let's try it with a bigger one. Okay, so we're gonna thread the ends of the wrap onto a needle. Nice big eye needle here. And then we're gonna tuck the ends of this wrap down into the center of the tassel like that. Make sure we got both of our ends here. So just pull those down right into the middle of the tassel and give them a nice strong tug. And that kind of hides them away. So now all that's left is to trim our tassel and make it nice and neat. So for the first layer, I like to um, I like to cut the bottom layer first, the very bottom of the tassel. And you know, you can take a minute to really get everything organized. Pull some threads this way. If you got a little bare spot you need to cover, you can kind of move things around and smooth it out again. And then I like to take that yarn label and put my tassel through that. I learned this trick from Marion Verloop, who is, um, an ankle weaver and she makes mochila tapestry crochet patterns very talented so you wrap the yarn label around the end of the tassel here and cut that first layer across kind of using the yarn label as a guide so now we have that nice neat first layer and we can use the first layer as a guide to cut our second layer and what I like to do is kind of peel back the top layer, <laughs> get the black out of the way, and then just pick up that red layer, my kind of wine colored layer here, and we'll trim that one next. 
So I'll get rid of all the black. And let's just pick up the wine color ones. And smooth these out straight. And you got to do this twice, like we'll do it on this side, and we'll flip the tassel over. So with everything lined up pretty straight, I'm going to trim the second layer about two inches above the previous one, maybe five centimeters or so. And we'll pick up the remaining pieces of wine color yarn here. And smooth these out straight. And we'll trim them just the same, same level here we did. There's one little black one hiding back here. Okay. Trim it on the same level here as our first little snip. And did we get all the red ones? Let's check. A couple more here. Okay. Trim the last couple there. And then now we just have to do the black layer on top. Trim that. So I'll smooth everything back out. And we'll just pick up this black layer and we'll cut that about two inches shorter than the previous layer. And of course these tassels are optional if you're not into tassels. No pressure. You make your blanket how you want to. And we'll trim that about two inches up here. And rotate, trim the rest of the black. Right at the same level here. And we'll rotate one more time and cut the rest here. This one too. Okay, there we have our tassel and you can, you can always go shorter. So uh, use your best scissors for these. Um, I have some Westcott titaniums I got from Walmart I really like. I also like the Fiskars titaniums. So now I've got two tassels here and you know, sometimes you have to make um, five of them before you can get four that match. <laughs> I noticed this one's a little bit longer, so I'm gonna even it up just so they match. And so make four, one for each corner, and I'll show you how to attach these to the corner of the blanket using the tie. So you just take the one of the ends of the tie, thread it on your yarn needle, and just work it right into the corner here. Um, try to find your corner stitch. Get it through on this side, and then we just weave in this end. If you want to make the tassels removable, you could just tie like a little bow here. But um, I just like to anchor each one down, a couple stitches, and then I'll weave in that end. Now we take the the other tassel tie end, put that on our yarn needle, and weave it in through that border. And then weave it in this direction a little bit. Now this yarn needle I picked out is a little bit too big for this <laughs> job. And, but you get the idea. We'll just weave in this end back and forth a little bit through the border to make it really secure. You could also tie a knot um, if you wanted to tie a knot before weaving in that end. And now you got a beautiful, fun, and funky tassel here. And thank you so much for joining me on this Runa C2C blanket journey. I hope you love your blanket and you should be very proud of yourself because this is a hard pattern. <laughs> so congrats if you finish this blanket. Thanks for crocheting and see you soon.